Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green ramp deck featuring Tatiova, Steward of Tides as our commander, voted on by my supporters on Patreon. 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, saying land creatures we control have flying, and whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, if we control 7 or more lands, up to one of them becomes a 3-3 three, three elemental creature with haste, and it's still a land. So Tatiova is going to be the main win condition in this deck, as our deck is easily capable of playing several lands in the same turn to animate a whole bunch of our lands into 3-3 three, three flyers, and that will often get the job done, so we don't need to devote too many more slots to expensive creatures to win the game. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, and I've split it up into a few different categories, starting with the more traditional ramp cards that put additional lands in play, and two mana others into the north. I'm only playing one snow-covered forest and island, since I wanted to make room for the beautiful full art stained glass lands from Dominaria, but you could technically just play all snow-covered lands if you want to play it safe. At three mana there's Cultivate, Grow from the Ashes can also be kicked, and the lands come into play untapped, which is also quite useful with Tatiova, so those lands can be animated and attack right away. There's Harrow, which also puts two lands on the battlefield untapped, so they can maybe attack right away. There's Stomper as a 4-4 that finds a land. Spring to Might, we can cast the first half to Ramp, and then later we can still draw two thanks to Aftermath. There's Root, Migration Path, and a Vastwood Surge, which will search up two lands at four mana. And then at 5 mana there's Nissa, which essentially doubles our mana production. Incredibly powerful and also good synergy with Tatiova, as the lands we animate with Nissa can also gain flying. Then we've got Verdant Mastery, can be played at 4 mana or 6 mana to ramp. And Beanstalk, we can use the 3 mana Fertile Footsteps, and then later still cast an enormous creature. Then for our next category we have ways to play additional lands, which is often the same as ramping early on, but once we start playing lands off the top of our deck, or maybe if we can replay or fetch lands out of the graveyard, can be even better. So we've got Joint Exploration if we play it kicked, which is similar to Explore and Grow Spiral at 2 mana. There's Druid class, which will gain life when a land enters, and if we level it up, let's just play an additional land each turn. And of course, the more of these effects we have in play, the better it is, as these also stack with each other. So a leveled up Druid class alongside Azusa will let us play four lands total each turn, as Azusa lets us play up to two additional lands each turn. Then Dried lets us play one more, and so does Sortooth. And then Uro can also put an additional land in play, can also be escaped out of our graveyard to gain life, draw cards, and to ramp all at the same time. And then Eureka Moment will draw two cards, putting one additional land from our hand onto the battlefield. Then the next category is landfall payoffs, so cards that get a nice benefit if a land enters the battlefield. Lotus Cobra making mana. Skewed Swarm will eventually make additional copies of itself, which can quickly get out of hand. Get the Provisioner, which will usually make treasure tokens. Tireless Tracker makes clue tokens for card draw. And then Nissa, if we can reach the minus six ultimate, which we can usually do in two turns, lets us draw a card with landfall. And then Zendikar's Royal makes two two tokens. And the five mana Tatiova gains one life and draws a card. Then the next section are ways to replay lands out of the graveyard with Ramonap Excavator and Crucible having the same effect. And then the Ancient Green Warden doubles our landfall triggers, so very good with the cards from uh, the previous category as well as our commander, as we can now animate two of our lands with each landfall trigger, and then also lets us replay lands out of the graveyard. And then we've got Splendid Reclamation returning all lands from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped, in case maybe our opponent casts a sweeper that uh, dealt with a bunch of our creature lands, and then can also be good with our fetch lands, and Slogurk can also potentially get lands back from our graveyard. Then the next section is ways to play lands off the top of our deck with a reality chip if we reconfigure it. Augur of Autumn doesn't really need any help and can eventually play creatures off the top as well if we have Coven enabled. And Oracle of Moldaya is probably the best one as it lets us play an additional land each turn as well as letting us play lands off the top. And then we've got a few ways to just find additional lands with Treasure Hunt, since we have a very high land count in the deck, is likely to find several lands. And then Annihilia's Intervention can find any X lands we want. 
then we don't have a ton of interaction in this deck, but we can make a lot of mana, and then once we have a lot of mana, maybe turn some of our lands into 3-3 creatures, having these almost one-sided bounce effects to bounce the entirety of the opponent's board back to their hand is incredibly powerful. So at 4 mana there's Consuming Tide, saying each player chooses a non-land permanent they control, and then return all non-land permanents not chosen this way to their owner's hands, potentially drawing a card as well. So this does not bounce our lands back to our hand, which means we can keep all the 3-3s we animated with Tatiova, and then Flood of Tears also bounces all non-land permanents, so we'll keep all those 3-3s on the battlefield. Then Reverse Rebuke just a one-sided bounce effect no matter what, and Cyclone Summoner a 7-7 that if we cast it from our hand, which is relevant since there's a few ways to play it off the top of our deck, then we get to return all permanents to their owner's hands except for Giants, Wizards, and Lands. Don't have a ton of Wizards in the deck, but of course the Lands staying in play is the important part. And then the final section is additional interaction with a wash away to counter opposing commanders, negate to maybe counter opposing sweeper effects. Then we've got a recovery as well as the timeless witness to get cards back out of our graveyard, especially powerful if we can get back a time warp to take an extra turn while we beat the opponent with our 3-3 flyers. And then there's Reclamation Sage to blow up opposing artifacts and enchantments. And then Kogla can also take out artifacts or enchantments and gets to fight when it enters. And we can also potentially pick these back up with our various bound spells so we can replay them once again. And then our mana base, also worth mentioning here, of course we have as many fetch lands as possible to synergize with the various ways to replay lands out of the graveyard, especially if we can combine it with some of our creatures to play additional lands, means we can replay the same fetch land over and over again while fetching some basics in the process. So again, have as many of these fetch lands as possible, including the new ones from Streets of New Capanna. Then we also have a few lands that are indestructible, Darksteel Citadel, and then there's also the new Multicolor Bridge, which was recently added. So these, if we animate them with Tatiova, will turn into 3-3 creatures that are still indestructible. So that has great synergy as well. And then a few creature lands with a lair and Hall of the Storm Giants. Got the channel lands, which can also end up in our graveyard for us to replay them. And then also worth mentioning is the uh, Crawling Barons, which we can turn into a creature. And then we can still put additional counters onto it with its ability. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Bergy, God of Storytelling, and we've got a very promising hand. Lotus Cobra can maybe hang on to Fabled Passage to trigger Landfall twice. In the meantime, our opponent's aggressively mulliganing, since they're probably some sort of combo deck looking to uh, storm off. There's a chance they have removal for Lotus Cobra, but so be it. Two mana, opponent foretells, could be the spell that lets them copy something. Alright, so let's do a bit of math here. If I explore, I can play forest, play passage. So we have two, three, four, five mana. So I could play Tatiova afterwards. Or we could try and wait to get immediate value of Tatiova. I think that's okay. So let's explore. And then next turn, we can maybe go for a Verdant Mastery. If Lotus Cobra survives. Just playing an Expanse with Tatiova in place, pretty nice. Reckless Impulse finds Tome and Looting, no land. Opponent stuck on two, ouch. Well, I guess uh, I don't mind Mastery here for six mana. And then next turn we can go off with Steward of the Tides. Keep my snow lands in the deck. Make some mana. Won't be able to cast anything else here, but that's okay. Can cycle path, although I'm probably better off casting it. Hit for five. And already a pretty big disparity in mana. But you never know. Bergy could combo off out of nowhere and kill us. 
So can't feel too comfortable. Could be a reason to hang on to Soaring City so we can channel it. So let's say we play Tantiova. Play Citadel. Turn it into a creature that's indestructible. And then Harrow's pretty good value here. Cast it, sacking an island. To get two lands that enter the battlefield untapped. Get a bunch more Tatiova triggers. And then if we want to play it really safe, I would want to keep up Soaring City here for two mana as we control two legendaries. I guess this still gets a land that comes into play untapped, so I can Fertile Footsteps, get an island. Alright, I think that's enough. So we'll attack with everyone, except we need to keep one land untapped, unless we have lethal, which 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I don't think we have. So now we can still Soaring City for two mana to bounce Bergy, and that should be very safe. can also play Summoner at any point. This card to hand size. This is a time for Bergy. Yep. Mox Amber to make a mana, in response will bounce Bergy, so they can't make red mana with the Mox. And that should be game. Alright. And our opponent explodes, let's have a look at the Exiled card, indeed a dual strike, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Judah, 5 color Legends. And uh, what do we think of this hand? Turn 2 can play a Druid class. A root for ramp. Yeah, we'll need a little bit of help, but it's got potential. So I'll start with a tapped bridge, which we can turn into an indestructible creature with Tatiova. And we also have the Darksteel Citadel, so we can make two indestructible creatures potentially. So turn 3 we could maybe level up our druid class to play additional lands. Turn 2 incubation druid for ramp. And there's an uro. I think I still prefer leveling up my enchantment here. So we can go citadel, level up, play storefront. And I guess I'll get an island. Next turn we can root. And then once we have more mana and maybe turn some of our lands into creatures, we can time warp. Provisioner is not bad either, so we're pointing off to a good start. Okay, let us play a root, I think. We can play two lands. Any thought to maybe keeping a land in hand to enable Tatiova next turn? Yeah, I guess we can keep one land in hand since I'll be able to play two anyways. So we'll get Island and Forests. And then next turn go Tatiova. Plus maybe a Time Warp as well. 
opponent's got the growth spiral. So, yeah. Doesn't get much better than this in terms of ramp for a 5 color deck, that is. Although we haven't seen many legendaries to go with Joda. Midnight Clock. Possible it's just kind of a 5 color value deck. And not really going too deep on the Joda synergies. Simulacrum can trigger Provisioner. Okay, so double landfall trigger with theater. Hope there's no wash away. Right, it's going to be a pact of negation instead. At least they'll have to pay for it next turn. So then now play Tatiova plus uh, theater. And animate our two indestructible lanes. Okay. Opponent has to pay for Pact. Two cards in hand for our opponents. And a Thieving Skydiver. Oh wow. Can actually steal my artifact land. So that was a pretty good play. Provisioner attacks. Alongside some lacrum. Sure. We'll let them draw. Alright, again into the north and then still time warp. Get one of our snow lanes. And attack. And then I can level up my Druid class all the way here if I'd like. Timeless Witness, get back Time Warp is a fun play, although it does leave me tapped out so I won't really be able to attack. So I might want to animate my land first. So I guess we'll start with Uro and see what's up. That seems fine. Could also just get back a fetch land with a Timeless Witness. But now an Augur of Autumn seems more fun. Alright. And animate maybe the Crawling Barons itself, since we can also add more counters to it eventually. And attack. And then next turn maybe Witness Time Warp will be the play. Bone falls to 7. Alright, Lotus Cobra a bit late to the party. So we're mostly looking at this Midnight Clock, which can eventually refresh the opponent's hand. But we'll need a significant mana investment. So yeah, they can play Joda, but it's not going to be incredibly impactful. And next turn we should be able to fly over. Hoping for some lands off the top. There we go. And pretty sure opponent's already dead on board, but might as well take an extra turn. And then hit for six, and next turn we've got more than enough. Opponent can gain three. Skydiver is going to chump. And that should do it. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Minsk, Ambu, Red Green, Aggro. So we'll definitely need our bounce spell eventually to clean up the board but this is a very nice hand multiple ways to play off the top 
question is whether I keep my fetch lands to maybe shuffle away the top of my deck. And uh, yeah, it's a close call. I guess we will hang on to it for now. Turn one Ozolith. Can maybe blow it up with a Reclamation Sage. And then turn three, go with a Sword Tooth. And then I'll hang on to my fetch land, I think. So next turn I can play Oracle. If there's no land on top, we can shuffle to try again. It's going to be a Lanor Elves, a bit late to the party. And a troop. All right, another fetch land. So play Oracle, step one. And we'll fetch, even though I wouldn't mind drawing the summoner. Really want to have a cool turn with Oracle in play if I can help it. All right, it's going to be an explorer. I guess we fetch again. And there's a forest. All right, so we got a bit of value at least. And then now we're ready to animate our lands into creatures with Tatiova. Probably time for their commander here. It's gonna be a Skargon Hellkite instead. So next turn that can kill Oracle. And the troop picks up an extra counter. All right, so Green Warden. I won't be able to play off the top, so I think it's just Tatiova plus Theater. And then now we have Coven enabled for Augur of Autumn as well. Alright, there's a Time Warp on top. Will be nice for next turn. And, uh,. I guess just play an auger and pass. So next turn should be sweet if there's a few lands following the time warp. Even if they kill Oracle, we still have auger with Coven enabled. Horn Beetle to make some insects. Luckily we can fly over thanks to Tatiova. So they still have four mana here, thanks to Karatids tapping for two. So we'll see if they decide to use the Hellkite. They don't. All right. Well, sadly no lands following here. So I'll just take my extra turn and uh, next turn I could Consuming Tide if I want. Can play Rex Sage, blow up Ozolith for what it's worth. No attacks. Still no land, but now I can play Witness as it's a creature. Could get back Time Warp, could also get back a Fetch land actually. Animate some more lands. And I can play a Towerless Tracker. And maybe keep going. Just a wash away. So we haven't been too lucky with playing lands off the top. But uh, still in a pretty good position, I think. Hellkite kills Towerless Tracker. Still no attacks. They know about Consuming Tide. And the wash away, so probably time to play Mint's Gambu before we can counter it. But then, uh, yeah, Tide. Also means we pick up our Witness again, so we can get back our Time Warp. Alright, they're gonna try and take out our island, I guess. And Reclamation Sage. Fair enough. Hellkite is doing a pretty good job on defense here. 
And even with Consuming Tide, they can keep the Hellkite in play. Alright, let's see if we can finally play a cluster of lands. Stomper I'll take. That'll shuffle so we have another shot at finding more lands. And get an island. Azusa. Okay. Guess we'll play Azusa here. There's a land, perfect. Can animate itself. Can play Dryad. So I think we've got all the extra lands creatures in play now. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. And then we'll uh, pass for now. Gotta wash away at the ready. And then next turn, Consuming Tide could set up lethal. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Kenrith, 5 color, good stuff typically. And my hand has potential, could use some ways to play extra lands or some actual ramp, but uh, Expanse is good with Excavator, a reality chip for additional value. So I'll fetch up an island so we can play turn 2. Keep my snow-covered lands in the deck, in case we draw into the north. Uh-oh, only one snow land remaining. Am I going to get punished for playing these beautiful stained glass lands? Let's find out. For now, Uro, we can play. And then Excavator, better to play if we can replay Expanse right away. Okay, so play Uro. And plenty of lands coming up. I think next turn the plan, probably just Excavator, Replay, Expanse. And then we're setting up for Tatiova to start animating our lands as well. Okay, a route I'm happy to draw, so I don't necessarily want to shuffle with Expanse. I could still play Excavator, play Expanse without sacrificing it. And then next turn, a route, or I can just play Tatiova. And then next turn, Root will already start animating my lands. Since we're not running out of lands to play, so I don't necessarily need Excavator right now. And then the plan's probably to animate a couple lands, and then play Summoner to bounce everything except my lands. And this is Triumph. Alright, so our opponent's got some land synergy of their own. It's gonna find... Couple forests. And they can activate a reclaimer to maybe get something like a fetch land to synergize with the provisioner, so that's gonna make a lot of treasure. Alright, Pwn goes for a gate instead. So maybe they have some gate synergies, see Simic Guild Gate as well. Okay. Also have the option of reconfiguring to play a land of the top, but I think we really just want to start ramping. This can animate itself. And then... Probably okay trading Tatiova, I don't think my opponent's likely to accept. But if they do, that's fine by me. Right, opponent trades. Can always replay Tatiova next turn, play a land. Just checking the creature types here, since the wizards also don't get bounced alongside giants. Tatiova, just a merfolk druid. So I'm happy if they tap out for some expensive creature we can bounce. Still pretty far from escaping Uro. Which would have been a reason to maybe put Tatiova in Graveyard. Ooh, wow, farewell. Exiles my lands as well, that's incredibly painful. So yeah, that was about the worst case scenario. Even lost my fetch land in the Graveyard for Excavator. So that hurts. How do we recover? 
Probably just Tatiova, play a land and pass. Yeah, I can't think of many cards that were more impactful in that spot. Losing our Uro, three of our lands. Our fetch land with Excavator. My source of card advantage with a reality chip. But at least our opponent also lost a few cards in the process. So yeah, it's going to be an uphill battle now. Working with fewer resources. And a summoner is not going to be as impactful now. Opponents get their own Uro. And they could still play Kenrith if they want. It's going to be a Nissa instead. Yeah, that's also a problem since we can bounce the lands with a summoner. I guess we can bounce Nissa herself. Or I can bounce the lands and then attack Nissa. That's probably the easiest solution. And then Soaring City, at least, I can replay with uh, Excavator as well. So I guess this still worked out. Maybe the ideal sequence involved immediately replaying Soaring City with Excavator instead of leaving it up to chance. It's going to be an Omnath for now. So can't really predict what's going to happen next here with our opponent's 5-color deck. Ooh, Nihilia's Intervention can find a bunch of different lands, including fetch lands. So I can maybe hold out on uh, Cyclone Summoner for a turn. And then Intervention X equals 4. Or maybe 3, so I can attack with a couple extra lands. Yeah, I guess this is fine. So I definitely want to get a fetch lands. Maybe getting some indestructible lands is also good in case of another sweeper. Get Citadel and the uh, bridge potentially. Still want to get a fetch land. Could also get a creature land like Hall or Lair. So we have options. Crawling Barons also pretty good. Yeah, let's get the Crawling Barons and then a Fetch Land. Broker's Hideout. And then for now, play Citadel. Animate Citadel. And hit for six. Okay. So next turn I have the option of playing Barons and then just adding more counters to it. So any way to play additional lands will also be welcome, so we can potentially replay the same hideout multiple times with Excavator. There's gate number three. Omnath starts drawing cards, which is dangerous territory. Four cards in hand, opponent still hasn't played their commander. So hoping they just play a couple uh, expensive cards. There we go, there's Kenrith. So now Cyclone Summoner's looking better. Puts a counter on Omnath. And it's going to hit us for 6. Okay, draw a lair. So opponents at 16. Can I somehow kill them? Crawling Barons animates. Can put two counters on it. Still not quite enough. Hideout gives me 12 in the air, plus 2 on the ground, so that's 14. So yeah, it might be time for Cyclone Summoner. At which point, maybe just play the untapped Crawling Barons. And then bounce everything. And attack for six. We temporarily lose flying, but uh, can replay Tatiova next turn alongside a Broker's Hideout. Which could give us lethal. So we'll see if our opponent's got more interaction. Plays land before playing Omnath, so that's not part of their plan. Just goes for Kenrith. 
no white mana to gain life, so that's also not their plan. Four mana left, explore. Three mana available. And just puts a counter on itself. Can attack for six, but we can block with a summoner. So that's not going to do it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the first sliver. And this hand has potential. Harrow can fix for blue. And then we can wash away to counter. Time warp for an extra turn is always nice. Definitely need a few more cards to really make this go off. Any way to play lands off the top would be appreciated. Thermal script for graveyard hate, okay. Maybe implies some sort of combo sliver deck instead. Arrow is an instance, and the lands we search up are untapped. So we can potentially wash away, but I guess we'll play this now. And a turn to Sentinel Sliver. Alright, so this just a Sliver Tribal deck after all. Tormod Script, I guess, a way for them to cascade into a zero mana card with their one drops. Can play a Provisioner now if we'd like. And then if it survives, Harrow can give us a bunch of landfall triggers. And no need to keep up Wash Away for their commander just yet. Pretender naming Sliver. Okay, so Vigilance. And then the Alsate for protection. Take two. And then can main phase Harrow if we'd like. There is an advantage to keeping more forests in case we find Nissa, but I have plenty of forests already. So get forest and island. And we'll make some treasure as well. Now could make another treasure and river's rebuke. I think I'm better off keeping up a wash away and then do I want a recovery harrow perhaps? Could also play Tatiova and pass. Maybe that's better. Opponent will be less suspicious of a counter spell. And then we can start making 3-3 three, three flyers next turn already. Time warps also Good to have to maybe get an extra attack step in. Opponent does still get to Cascade. I think I'll still counter before Cascade resolves on the off chance that would mess up my counter spell. Although I guess on the other hand they could let the Sliver go to the graveyard and hit like the Gravedigger that's a changeling but they're more likely to put it back in the command zone. Okay, so we'll take three. And then now a River's Rebuke is looking a lot better. Explore could also be worthwhile. And a Growth Spiral could also play this tapped, although Recovery getting back Time Warp has to be better here. So we'll make a treasure, cast Time Warp, take an extra turn. And a Tireless Tracker is nice too. Really want to hit some land drops here. I guess I could wait on recovery for Time Warp and for now play Tracker and Grow Spiral. And hope to find some lands. Cogla instead. Yeah, let's uh, just pass then. Or do I want to play recovery to make 
treasure and a clue. Getting back time warp just seems so good. A Mistwalker, that's fine. And we'll take four. I guess five. Into the north can find a snow land. So we'll start there. Bunch of triggers. And then now I could play a Kogla instead of a River's Rebuke. They can protect with Alsaid if we try and fight. So maybe I should just uh, send all their things packing. Get an attack in for 9. And our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Tezzeret, the Schemer, blue-black artifact. Hand seems acceptable, just lots of ramp. And now a time warp's always a welcome. I'll get the fetch land out of the way since we might need to curve out here. No turn 2 play, turn 3 probably go for Stomper. Bowen's got the Signet. Not playing any Signets myself since it really benefits us to just play more a land-based ramp. So our opponent's got the Reservoir. And now Tesserets. So next turn with Root we can already enable Stomper to start pressuring Tesserets. And then I'll wait on the uh, Time Warp. Ooh, opponent's got a Pact of Negation to counter. And they have just enough mana to pay for it here. With a treasure. Tesseract's up to 7. Well, I guess now we could... Verdant Mastery for 6. If I Time Warp, then I don't get to attack with the Stomper here. And don't quite have the mana to time warp and then witness back the time warp. So I think going for mastery is probably our best bet. Alright, tank Tesseret. Could have also gone for Tatiova and then a 4 mana mastery, but don't really want to ramp my opponent. Alright, fair enough. Statue to make my spells more expensive. Luckily we're a ramp deck, so we can hopefully manage. So what's next? I can play Tracker, play a land. Could go for Tatiova, play a land. And smash. Or I can just time warp. Better to time warp if we already have a more established board, I think. So I don't think I need more card draw, so let's just start beating down with Tatiova. And take out Tesserets. And then Time Warp now is going to be a lot more effective if we can dodge a Sweeper. Gilded Lotus for three more mana. And a Reverse Engineer to draw. Okay. Fetch lands nice. Get two Tatiova triggers. Cast our Time Warp and attack. And our opponent's already throwing in the towel here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the new Slimefoot at 2 mana. And I think we have a Keeper. Not the fastest hand ever, but uh, Mastery can help us ramp. And I'm okay running out of fetch land here. Probably fine to get an Island, so we have double blue. And then can run out Tatiova. 
opponent plays Slimefoot. And Anissa's gonna be exciting, so reason to play out my forests as much as I can. Witness to get back. Theater is also an option. Mastery for four is a bit of a nombo with the opponent's Slimefoot. Although I guess never mind, I can give them an island so it doesn't trigger. Opponent kills Tatiova, that's fine. We'll be able to replay it soon enough. So play island and then mastery for four mana. Getting three forests and one island to give to my opponents. Okay. So now Nissa's looking pretty strong. Opponent finds another card. Fungal plots and a spore crawler. So do I have the mana to play Nissa and Kogla? I think so. Which is pretty crazy. But that's why Nissa so powerful. And then next turn when Kogla attacks we can take out the fungal plots. Although I assume our opponent will have a bit of interaction here. E to extinction. Well, at least we still have our Nissa as it stands. Now our opponent did exile Kogla, so no getting it back with Timeless Witness. So we are kind of running low on action a little bit. Can play Tatiova. And then make my Citadel into a creature. And then our Nissa lands also gain flying, which is pretty fun. Could also go for Witness, get back a fetch land to animate two of my lands at once. Or even get back Mastery so we can play it for the full amount. Yeah, I guess that's okay. So for now, we'll just go Citadel. Animate that one. And then Witness get back my ram spell. Suppose I could cast it, but then I'm not attacking this turn. So we'll animate a forest. And attack. And most of my lands also have vigilance. Alright, opponent's gonna sacrifice to draw. Falls to 18, and I'll pass. Also, in the event of a sweeper, I wouldn't want to animate too many of my lands. And our opponent explodes, yeah, they know what's incoming. So Nissa definitely got to win on this one. So yeah, got to see our blue-green Tatiova deck in action. And the fact that our commander provides us with a steady win condition means we can potentially cut some of the more expensive creatures in the deck that you would typically play in these ramp strategies and just rely on the commander instead. And then you've got more room for additional ramp cards, ways to play lands of the top, which kind of fuels our commander's game plan as well. So I've been having lots of success with this strategy. Of course, didn't face the toughest opposition along the way, admittedly, didn't face some of the higher tier commanders, but going 10 and 1 with any deck is still a sign that the deck is pretty strong. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.